not my most flattering angle. I'm starting this video now because um, I'm like hanging around. I'll, I'll explain what I mean. Um, I'm like hanging around and I'm trying to chill. So I've come in here to talk to you guys. Um, so basically, about an hour, an hour and a half ago, I had a really funny turn. I got really breathless and really passy Audi. I'm still I'm breathless. Every time I get up, I'm really, really breathless. My blood pressure is currently sat 188 over 102, which is monster high. I spoke to one of my midwives. Um, she told me to ring the bigger hospital. I spoke to them and they were like, no, call an ambulance. So I'm currently waiting for an ambulance. My blood pressure is remaining that high. I don't know what's going on. I'm hoping that it's nothing like a blood clot or anything like that. Um, because I can't catch my breath. I am really, really hot and I do have a bit of a fever going on. So I'm trying to figure out what it could be. I don't think it's COVID or anything like that. Um, but I do have some protein in my waters. I'm really, really hot though. Um, but I thought I'd just start this video. I've come in my kitchen for a second just to get five minutes of quiet and just try and I don't even know I just don't feel good I feel like somebody's ran off with all my energy and I just do not feel good you can hear my mum trying to occupy all the kids they're really worried because oh you can't tell here but because of the line but um apparently I have zero color in my face I feel very sick I felt very sick yesterday all day yesterday so I don't really know what it is? Um, maybe it's an infection, I don't know, but we're gonna get seen to and hopefully it's nothing more than an infection or something like that, if you know what I mean. Okay, please excuse the state of my face, but we are in Labour Ward at the moment. We're actually being made, uh, moved to Antenatal. In a minute, they're going to get me a room there, or possibly on the ward. Um, they've managed to stabilise my blood pressure. At one point, it got so high they started to really worry, but they've managed to stabilise it. The only thing is now that they're struggling to keep my blood sugar levels up. So they've decided that I'm not going anywhere tonight. I'm staying here, and I'm going to be monitored throughout the night. Um, and I'm being tested for preeclampsia because I think that I may have preeclampsia again. I'm hoping I haven't. Um, so yeah, at the moment I'm still in one of the labour rooms. I'm actually in the same room we gave birth to Madison in. Um, but she's got me here, they're just waiting for a bed to come up on the antenatal ward. Kev's gone down to get me something to eat, some sandwiches or something, because my blood sugar levels have dropped again so that's fun um i've got a really horrible headache that i can't get rid of i was being wheeled around in a wheelchair and like all this attention was on me and oh it was horrible i hate i hate it i hate that kind of attention i just felt really awkward and really i don't know like i'm just like leave me alone um but yeah, they've been really good. They have been really good. I've been told many times that I look awful. So, you know, feel free to tell me that in the comments. Um, I have zero colour in my face. I don't know if you can tell. Yeah. Um, so it's going really good. I'm just waiting to see. It's going, it's going really good so far. Um, I'm just waiting to see what's happening. But they're keeping me in overnight. I'm going to be monitored. I've had these tests done. We're going to wait for the results of that. We're going to be monitoring my blood sugars and my blood pressure overnight, literally every hour. Yay. And then tomorrow morning I have a growth scan and the doctors are going to come around and they're going to discuss whether they would like me to be induced or they would like me to cook baby for a little bit longer. So at the moment we are 37 plus 3 days, um, 
and they've said it's absolutely fine if they need to induce me now um, it's safe for baby um, and it could possibly be safer for me to deliver but they just have to make their decision tomorrow when they've put all of the bits and pieces together so yeah it's just a case of waiting so I'm trying to settle myself the breathlessness when I get up is still there but not as prominent um, now that my blood pressure has settled um, but that is the main concern at the minute is my blood pressure and my blood sugar levels and this awful headache that I cannot get rid of they've given me some um, painkillers to try and get rid of it but it just won't go away so yeah I'm gonna have something to eat get settled into either a room or on the ward Kev is going to go home to the children. I'm missing the kids so much. They've just FaceTimed me and they kind of, they're driving my mum up the wall at the moment because the kids always get naughty when drama happens because they're worried, they're scared, they're excited because baby might come out, but they're terrified because their mum's in hospital, you know. Um, and obviously, as much as we tried to keep them out of the way while the paramedics were there, they saw how high my blood pressure was and they saw how sick I was getting. So yeah, they're a little bit aggravating at the moment because I think it's I think it's just a case of they are scared. But my mum's with them and the boys, the older boys are helping out as well. So yeah. So I will let you guys know more when I know. But right now I'm just trying to enjoy the quiet and just get some rest and then hopefully they will have the bed ready for me on antenatal and I can just settle in and relax and get myself ready for baby. I'm so not prepared for baby coming, I'm so not. I have all her clothes at home ready to be ironed and put away and I've washed all the covers to like her sleepy head and her um, mama room and things like that and it's just not all ready and now I've left it so work Kev has to do it all and I just feel very bad. It will come together in the end. It will be fine. As long as she's fine and I'm fine and we're both safe and everything goes smoothly, hopefully, fingers crossed. This isn't the most gourmet meal you've ever had. Yeah. Kev's in labour now. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, don't don't <laughs> let your back go. If you're, I'm sorry you like this and your your back goes. <laughs> It just wouldn't be funny. It is now, what time is it now? 20 past seven. 20 past seven. And we are not going to be expecting a bed before eight o'clock. So, get comfy, when not you? I had to get up off the bed. I felt really nauseous and I needed to move around. Um, my blood sugar levels dropped again, so... Kev got me this chicken salad and then he got me like a whole bag of goodies. Like, I think he bought the shop. <laughs> yeah. Are you comfortable? Do you want me to just go and you can just like go to sleep? How about tomorrow? <laughs> okay, it's been a little while and we've been put in a side room on the Anthony Hill ward. I'm sat here with Jackson's teddy. We're having a cuddle. We're having a squeeze. Um, I don't know. He gives me comfort. He does give me comfort. Um, but yeah, I haven't had my blood pressure checked in a little while, so they'll be coming to do that. They're going to do that throughout the night. I've still got a headache. I can't shift this headache. Um, so they're going to give me some stronger medication for it and just keep an eye on it. On walking from the labour ward to the antenatal ward, I couldn't breathe. I just could not catch my breath. Um, and I'm wondering if it's something to do with my B12 and my vitamin D levels, hence, uh, you know, of, of why I'm getting breathless. And I did mention that to her. So she said that the blood tests and the, the other tests I've had will all point out if I've got any kind of anemia going on. Um, they don't check particularly for B12 or vitamin D though so that's something I'll talk to the, D the doctor about when they come around in the morning because they're going to come talk to me in the morning and then obviously they're going to talk to me after I've had the scan and make a decision on what they want to do. Hopefully my, my blood pressure will behave through the night. Oh, they dropped it. <laughs> 
I'm hoping it is because I'm really worried. I mean, I was monitored earlier. They monitored the baby's heartbeat earlier and everything was fine. But it just, it's worrying me that if my blood pressure can get to that kind of height, then what effect is it having on her in there? And I don't know if you can tell as well, my face is swollen. I think it emphasizes it because I'm lying down, but my face is a bit swollen. My hands swelled up earlier, you can see. I can't actually get my rings off my fingers. So yeah, you can see how the swelling is in my hands. It's all drama, drama, drama. I was really hoping that this would be like a straightforward, you know, labor when I got to this point. Um, wow, that woman is really, really shouting. This woman has gone into labor and I really feel for her. She kind of shouted F off at the midwives really, really loud. And I really do feel for her because we all know how, how it goes, how it feels. Um, but yes, yeah, she is very verbal. And because I've got my windows open and I'm not far off the labor ward, I can hear all of it. Um, so yeah, I can hear all the women that are going into labor. I can hear the ones that are going into labor, into labor on the antenatal. And I think it's just that one woman that's gone into labor there. But yeah, it's all on the go. It's all on the go. I just hope I feel better soon. I'm just, like I said, worried that if this is the effects it's having on me, what is the effects of that it's having on her in there? So I'm more concerned with um, monitoring her rather than monitoring me. Monitoring? Monitoring. Yeah. And I really wish this headache would bugger off. Good morning, guys. So it is now about half past five in the morning, something like that. I'm just trying to make myself feel a bit better. Um, I was putting some dry shampoo through my hair because my hair felt just absolutely minging. I don't usually use dry shampoo, but I got this little travel bottle of Batiste. Um, I'm not a huge fan because it leaves your hair white at the top, but I just feel like I'm on like day three of my hair and it's a mess because I've had it up on the top of my head. I'm just trying to make myself feel a little bit better. I've been washed. I've gone changed, brushed my teeth, um, I was going to use the shower but it didn't, it doesn't look brilliant in there so I chose not to. Um, I have got some really simple makeup with me but I don't even know if I can be bothered with that. My blood pressure checked throughout the night and it's been quite stable. The only thing that we couldn't get rid of was my headache and it's still lingering. So I'm hoping they're gonna be able to give me some more paracetamol or something this morning. She did mention Codradamol um, last night, but she went to get it, never came back. Like three times she went to get it, never came back. So I just gave up on that. I know I'm complaining like a lot. I don't mean to complain like a lot. I think I just wanna be at home to be honest. Um, but, yeah, I'm gonna do a little skincare. I brought with me my vitamin C serum. Can you see that? I don't know if you can see it. it's vitamin C brightening serum by Garnier, and I got my little um, skin sense vitamin C eye rolly thing. Lily, bless her, she's put a little vitamin A. Um, moisturizer in here but it's actually empty um, the joys of having daughters it's actually empty um, luckily I do have a vitamin C one that is in my suitcase because obviously I brought all my bags with me because we don't know what's happening yet so thankfully that's in there so I've got that with me they've given me these stock sexy stockings to wear as well I haven't put them on yet I do get told off the night I haven't put them on they're so uncomfortable. They're the compression stockings that they ask you to wear while you're in here. Um, but 
if I if I end up having to stay then I'll put them on if not then I don't really want to waste a product that it just isn't needed right now <sighs> I feel like all I've done in this video so far is babble it's all I, it's all I can do <laughs> I don't know what else to do I'm just kind of stuck sitting here I just want to feel better and I want to know what they want to do because if they want to you know they, they they're gonna come around um, this afternoon and tell me whether they feel it's safe for her to stay inside um, or if they feel it's safer to bring her out I today am 37 weeks and four days so like I said yesterday they they said it's safe for her to come out if need be um, but they haven't decided whether it's safer for her to stay in or safer for both of us for her to come out but they did do a, a quick scan yesterday like just to check that her head's down in case anything was to go forward um, they said that she's looking pretty good in there so she's alright and I did have a ghost scan today which I've said like 50 million times so it's just a case of waiting to see what's going to happen and I still haven't had my test results back yet so I'm really unaware whether I've got preeclampsia or it's an infection or it's some kind of deficiency or whatever that's been causing all this to happen all I do know is, is I'm so glad that my blood pressure has come down because let me tell you it was so high I felt rotten absolutely rotten and it made me feel very very sick over and over again she kept the woman kept saying to me it's because your blood pressure is so high you feel very sick <laughs> make it go down then <laughs> oh I don't know I've been pumped through with medication to keep my blood pressure down all night which was really fun she kept coming in with these little little pots with pills in them and she said can you take this one for me please and while she's writing it down and asking me questions but it has worked, it has kept my blood pressure down. The last reading was 130 over 60, so that is so much better than what it was yesterday. Um, so it's nice and stabilized at the moment, but just gotta wait and see what's, what's happening, whether it's preeclampsia or not, or just something else that's causing it. It might not be pregnancy related at all, so. I don't know. I'm in the right place and I've got some beautiful people taking care of me. Some of them are really funny, some of them are really sweet. And yeah, um they do hand over at eight o'clock and like I said, what let me check time. It's twenty to six now, so I wonder who I will get next. I need to do my blood sugars, but I've used so much hand sanitizer, I think the reading's just gonna be so messed up. I have got some little um like antiseptic wipes to clean my finger with beforehand but I just feel like I've used so much of this honestly I've got this little this little hand gel bottle am I the only one where hospitals kind of gross you out a little bit I don't know but I've used so much of it I feel like this is going to really interfere with the um blood sugar test but I got to do it anyway my fingers have become so numb to this stuff now let's have a look shall we what's it gonna be what's it gonna be 5.0 okay. so it's it's a little higher than normal so maybe it hasn't appeared a little bit but I did speak to um, the leading diabetic nurse yesterday she's lovely um and she said that during my labor if i have a normal labor um or induced labor i will be monitored every hour with my blood sugars and if my blood sugar had two occasions of where it went over eight eight point zero then or eight point two something like that um <coughs> Then I would have an insulin pump put um, into my arm just so that when, you know, it would can be controlling my blood sugar levels. If it stayed below the 8th, then it wouldn't be a problem. 
I would have to do a 24 hour check of my blood sugars after I've had baby. And then every three years I will have a HbA1c blood test to just check that my gestational diabetes hasn't turned into type 2 diabetes. She said that's quite common where um, sometimes women who have had gestational diabetes go on to then have type 2 diabetes afterwards. Um, and it's just a case about managing it and seeing if you can get rid of it or whatever. So yeah, we had a really long chat on that yesterday. Um, and she's really, she is really, really good. And it was quite funny actually, because Kev's type two diabetic, which is strange because he's quite thin. Um, but he doesn't particularly take care of himself very well, which drives me a little bit nuts. Um, and she was asking about his sugar levels and when she found out how high his sugar can get sometimes, she wasn't happy, so he got told off, and it was quite funny because he kept saying, but you're here for her, not for me. <laughs> it was it was quite cute, but she's a lovely woman, she is. Um, yeah, I think now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have a drink, probably surf through YouTube and TikTok on my phone, um, and just wait. It is, horribly horribly silent in this room i'm used to chaos and noise and there's no noise i almost want to go and tell the midwives to come and run around the room for a minute just so i can have the noise uh, they keep telling me to enjoy it yeah no silence just isn't my thing it isn't my thing oh I have got a closer and heat magazine to read, so I might read those. It's got to wait. It's like half past nine now. Um, feeling a little more energetic. I've got the fan on. I literally, this thing is saving me right now. It's so hot in here. I've got literally all four windows open. They've just been around to check my blood pressure, and my blood pressure is creeping back up again. She said it's on the higher end of what she wanted to be so that's happening um i've still got a really horrible headache but she said it could be down to the um blood pressure medication that i'm on but we're just about to put the monitor on and listen in on baby make sure that she's doing okay and that is literally my main concern of what effects this is having on her she's moving around quite a bit but i just want to make sure that she's okay um, my scan isn't until 12 o'clock, so I won't be having that till then, and then I won't see the doctor until after that, so there's a possibility that I will probably be staying here tonight, um, but we will see how it all goes. Kevin's at home. We joked yesterday that it would be funny, it wouldn't be funny if his back was to go, and he called me literally about 20 minutes ago and said, we have a problem. I said, what's my eyes? Um, I might be visiting you in a wheelchair. I said, oh no, what's happened? He said, no, my back's gone. I'm in a lot of pain. I can't stand up straight. I thought, oh no, 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 not now. So everything that could be going wrong is going wrong. I need some kind of fairy godmother to come and fix everything. So if there's any fairy godmothers out there, let me know. Um, it's all going to be good. It'll all come together in the end. But now I'm worried because Kev's got all of the kids on his own. He's trying to do the last bits of homeschooling that I wanted to get done today. Um, and he's in a lot of pain. And Ethan's had to go to work, obviously. he's He works. He works a full-time job, so he's had to go to work. Um, he did offer to take the, the day off and help Dad out. But I said to him, do you know what? You don't want to get yourself into trouble with your job go to work and we'll see how things go um but dylan is at home he's helping out it is what day is it today it's a thursday so he doesn't have any of his classes today he's got the day off with his classes so he's been really really helpful and he keeps messaging me he's telling me how much he loves me and he misses me and he wishes that he could be here with me he's asked many times if he can come up and see me um but unfortunately he's not allowed on this ward only kevin is allowed on this ward um, so yeah, that's what's happening now. Time seems to be going really slow. I'm not going to lie, I'm incredibly bored. I've even offered to tidy up um, 
out an award for them. <laughs> like we've got like this tea and coffee stand thing, and I was like tidying up because I was making a cup of tea. So, yeah, <laughs> I need something to do. I can't sit here. I'm not. I'm not a sit down and not do something person. Yeah, so it's driving me a little bit mad. Just had my scan done. She's just working out what percentile we're on and if everything's okay. And um, then we go from there. She's so cute. She's so cute. We saw her face. It's so cute. But I'm going to wait for this and go back to the ward. And then we'll, I'll explain everything that the doctors have said to me earlier on. Okay, so I'm back in my room. Oh, I look dreadful, but it is so hot in here. I actually just don't even care. Um, I think you get to a point where you're in hospital and you don't worry about makeup. And you don't worry about what you look like. I've got wrinkles. I've got a pale complexion today. I've got frizzy hair because it is sweltering in here. And I just don't care. Anyway, I've just had some lunch. They, I had a chicken and mayonnaise sandwich. Literally just that food, chicken and mayonnaise sandwich. I had nothing else and I just had chicken and mayonnaise and these little things. Um, I had some custard because I've fancy custard and my juice. This is my this is my drink. This is the drink I was given. Which is quite cool actually. It's just enough, but it's nice. Anyway, moving on. So um, I came back from the scan department, ultrasound department, could not breathe, like literally couldn't breathe, got back to this ward and just couldn't catch my breath, and so I've had to sit and I've sat, I've had some lunch, I've kind of brought myself back up from that. Um, again, we need to do some more tests to figure out what is causing that. Mm. So the scan went really well. Like I said, she is perfect. Everything is perfect. It was so cute because you could see all her profile. And then she turned and looked where we were scanning and she kept blinking her eyes, which was so cute. <laughs> it was so cute. She um, was moving her eyes around as well. And made a demonstration. You know, we all know how eyes move. Um, it was so so cute and then she said to me she goes do you see all them spikes at the back of her head said, yeah i can see it all it's like really spiky and she said that's all her hair so whether she's going to be like a full head of hair or just a little bit we don't know but it looked quite a bit but everything's fine um and they estimated her weight at the moment at six and a half pounds already but it's just an estimation and it can go two pounds either way so we will see when she is born but i've passed all the information over to the midwife that's taking care of me today and she is reviewing it all now and she'll take that back to the doctor i'm due another blood pressure check in a little while and then when that measurement is taken we will determine what's going to happen um they think that i'm likely to be staying here tonight and then tomorrow um, they'll repeat more blood tests and do more blood pressure checks. If my blood pressure doesn't settle, then I'm most likely going to be looking at induction. If not, then the doctor said that they will look at inducing me in between week 38 and 39, but I'm not to go over week 39 because my blood pressure has kind of stayed elevated and it's been too high at points, i.e. yesterday. Um, so yeah, not to go over 39 weeks and induction between 38 and 39 weeks unless something pops up with my blood pressure again in the next 24 hours and then we will look at an earlier induction. So yeah, we're just kind of taking one step at a time at the moment. Kevin is doing really well at home. His back is feeling better. He's taken some medication on my orders. I called him, I was like, take medication. Go take your naproxen, go take your painkillers, 
and then call me and let me know. But he says it's not as bad as it was last time, so he's hobbling along. He's busy getting the kids all lunch. He was going to come up earlier this morning to see me, and I said, you know what, there is literally no point. There is no point at this moment. All I'm doing is sitting in the bed looking out of a window. There's nothing that he could possibly do here that would make any difference. So I've told him to just wait until I have the scan, wait until I have the next blood pressure check, wait until I see the doctor and see what's happening, and then we'll go from there because I don't want to drag him into the hospital and sit in this room with me, bored out of his mind for no reason. Um, he was thinking about bringing um, Madison with him later, but she's not actually allowed on this ward. Um, children aren't allowed on this ward. So I would have to go down and see her, which to me would be amazing. I want to see her, but in, in another respect, I actually feel like that might upset her because we're, you know, we've got this really close bond and I think if she sees me and then mommy has to go again, I think that's going to upset her. So I think maybe it might be a bad idea, but we're going to discuss that in a little while once we know what's what and then go from there. But all in all, she's seen me on FaceTime. We've spoken on FaceTime. She's given me lots of cuddles and kisses and smiles over FaceTime. So she's seen me, so she's not completely away from me. You know, she's seen mummy's face. And all the other girls have been really helpful to dad as well. And they're, I think they've been a little too helpful, actually, because they, they're trying to help make lunch. They're trying to help tidy up. They're trying to help look after each other. And I think they're driving dad a little bit bonkers. So, yeah. But it's good, though. Anyway, there's not much more for me to do but sit here and wait again. I think I feel like that's all I've done is just sit and wait and get kicked. A whole lot of kicking. Normally she sleeps through this part of the day and she's really active in the evening. But she's been really, really active all day. And um, it's probably because she's been like prodded and poked at all different angles. To get up, I need to, I need to be doing something, so... It's driving me insane.